I'm Katya Woods. I'm a journalist, film television journalist out of Philadelphia. Um, what's pretty fitting? English or Portuguese? I mean, I'm Porto. <laughs> wow. No <laughs> choice. <laughs> we can do both, right? So I first want to say is, acho muito orgulho, tive um filme, sou um diretor negro, uma família negra, e não era um trauma. <laughs> uh -huh, so I really love that about the film because when we as someone who lives here when people think mm -hmm. of brazil they they are surprised when they go to brazil that there are black people and it's always oh. like yes because when they think of brazil they think of adriana lima they think of giselle and that's mm -hmm. the picture that unfortunately brazil sometimes shows of us to the world but what i loved about this film is this family reminded me a lot of my family in brazil mm -hmm. right um and just the mother, the father, and even though they were black, it was very much a Brazilian culture thing. So talk a little bit about what was your inspiration for this family? Yeah, it's funny you say that, Katya, because this misconception, I think it comes from maybe not seeing enough content of that portrays in an honest, in an honest way, Brazilian families, that we are the majority of the population, black people. Uh, so, uh, but we don't have many films, especially feature films in fiction, uh, that have this kind of depiction of an honest family, a black family, like struggling to pay the bills and just living there in the daily basis. So I have many inspirations, most of them just my family, my friends, my surroundings. But I think uh, David comes from this place of being a dreamer that I can relate to me in a way, because I always want to do films since I was like seven years old. And that was not like an obvious choice for me. That wasn't something that I could find right in the corner where I grew up, a place that could teach me how to make films. So I have to be a little bit obsessed and stubborn to do this. So, but yeah, I think the inspiration comes from also this desire from many years to portray families like that. I've been doing other projects like short films and previous feature, but this was my first solo feature. So in a way, I, I, I think I could bring a little bit closer to home in a way. So if you have many characters that have my people that are close to me that I use the same name and combine some stories. There are the, the, the pictures that, that the characters are seen in one scene is actually my grandfather, the, the grandfather they're talking about. Uh, the character of Wellington is very based on my father, which is a recovery alcoholic as well. And my father is, is talking the last scene. He's the one talking in the AA meeting. So everything is kind of personal, inspired by my life in a way. My family from Rio de Janeiro, but mm -hmm. I remember being 20. We were living already here in the United States and explaining to them that I was not living at home, that I was living in college with other women. And it was something that is so westernized for me, right? It was, mm. oh, I'm in college, that's what we do. We get roommates, we live with other girls, and we go to school. And my family just kept think, looking at me. So you're living away from the family on purpose. We get the school part, but the idea that I was not living with someone else because I was married, right? Mm. And just the whole idea that I was choosing to have a life of academia, education, career, and for me, marriage was like, oh, if it happens, it happens. It was not a priority. So I understood this. And I love that you're having this in the film because it's a very real conversation in Brazil, especially when it comes to women. Yeah. Why is it that you want to leave? What's wrong with us? Right. Mm -hmm. And talk about why that is important because the parents think you hate us, but it's not that it's. I want to grow, I want to do other things, you know what I mean? So talk a little bit about why that scene is so important for people outside of the culture to see. Yeah, because I, I also think that one misconception from maybe someone that doesn't understand Brazil 
is uh, that we are not a very conservative country. I think we have a very, cons a very conservative country, especially in my state. But many places in Brazil, we have a, a very patriarchal way of seeing our society. Brazil is very misogynistic country, many aspects. So I think, uh, and we see that not only in the more obvious ways, but uh, in this kind of uh, expectation that parents create for the, their sons and especially daughters in a way. So I think when we, I brought this clash between those two characters, the daughter and the father, I think it's a clash between generations and a clash about very, very old thoughts that are, are still remaining in society today. And I think, but the, the interesting thing is that it's not, it's not only a thing about uh, some thoughts and practices that we have in society, but how they combine with actually people's feelings. So <laughs> this scene, we have in some very, very old form of thinking by the father, but in a way he's also pissed about kind of losing his baby girl in a way, you know? Uh, and it's something that I really can relate now that I'm a father. My, I had the daughter last year, just uh, one year after, like, years after shooting this film and writing this film. But now I really understand something I wrote way before. Uh, but I think those things, things kind of get mixed up. So I also wanted to do a film about this because this is not something analytical or psychological or a, like a statement about how society is, but the story about characters and how they are flawed and how they have to find harmony in difference in a way. Um, the other thing is I think is very important. I say to people, I feel like Brazil is one of the few countries outside of the continent where non-traditional religion, Macumba, is mm -hmm. accepted. It, we don't have to hide it. You're not um, considered a bad person. You know, it's very common. You can believe in God traditionally and do Macumba and go see and do all of that. The mother uh, is very much, she believes in spirits, which is a, such a Brazilian thing. I was watching a movie the other day and it was very scary and some things were going on with witches. I stopped, I lit my candles because we don't do that. We don't do bad energy. We need something to protect us. So I love that you showed it and yeah. allow people to say, instead of saying this is good or bad, just to say, this is our culture. This is what we do. And the mother was feeling that she had um, mal paciencia, uh, mal presencia, mal mm -hmm. espíritu entre ela, né? E ela tá pensando assim que ela era a pessoa que tá fazendo as coisas assim na família, que tava indo uh, mal. Então, para mim, era muito importante que você mostrou isso, porque muitas vezes é ignorância que o povo fora do Brasil, quando pensa assim, macumba, espírito, as coisas assim, explica um pouquinho por que você queria, why you wanted us to see this. And again, you did it very intelligently because you are presenting it and then we get to decide how to take it in. Yeah, I think we need to find ways of showing these cultural elements as part of the characteristics of a person and not something like exotic, because I think historically that might be have seen many times as, as something exotic. And I think when you portraying as something exotic, you kind you are putting kind of a distance with, between the subject and the matter. And in this way, it doesn't wouldn't make sense because this is just something that Tessia lives, the character lives as long as many other people in Brazil. As you said, it's something that despite not being largely accepted in our society, many people in Brazil, each time more, I think using, didn't used to be like this, but I think nowadays there are some people that still see as something weird in Brazil and something evil, just because it's black, it comes from black, black culture, it's just racism, pure and simple. But uh, the people that are part of this culture, are part of Umbanda or Candomblé, it's just their, their daily life. It's things they do when they wake up, it's things they do when, just like going to church. We never see going to church in a film as being something way exotic. It's just something that people do. But we don't, 
uh, we don't portray as something exotic because it's part of like a main culture or uh, and the, the the other religions or some other religions are also uh, are put in this different way just because of prejudice of non-understanding so one of the things I wanted to do and in this film is part of this character timeline and is much special in one scene where when she has kind of uh, uh, she's, she, she, she goes to a mind de santo né? and I think this is just beautiful to see how these are resources characters can uh, get to kind of have a uh, just as going to the doctor in a way so that was why I was, was trying to show that this is just part of the culture when you are feeling something you have to treat it like that if you, the doctor doesn't work maybe the spirit world might work so yeah absolutely the other thing too is football is everything in brazil yeah and you can hate your neighbor you can hate family people but when the seven song is on we are all brazilians right now yeah. we have no arguments everybody is on the same thing so the passion that Wellington had for football, for his son to see, it's very, it's very similar here in America. It's in his mind, because we don't, as pe poor people, disenfranchised people, always have the option to go to school because money is associated with that, to have a professional mm -hmm. career, right? Especially in Brazil. So for him, it was not him it's partly him forcing this on his son but at the same time he's saying you have this talent and you have a gift to be able to give yourself to give all of us a better life right which i understand but then the son is saying but you never ask me like he's he, within his himself with his face or expression but this is not my dream mm -hmm. i want to do other things you just said it, Brazil is a very patriarchal, very conservative, we do what our parents tell us. We don't do that back and forth we do here in America. So show, talk a little bit about that conflict. The son is, the suffering is internal. He never tells his father, I don't wanna give it away because I want people to see the movie, what he does it's to, to explain he doesn't want this life, but this, the beauty is, is Wellington is all falando, and his son is all, boy, I don't want this, but how do I say I don't want this? Mm -hmm. Why was that <laughs> important for you to show it like this? I think it's something that can be larger than life, this dream that Wellington has, because it's very poetic. And we have many stories in Brazil with Pelé and other players that just are larger than life things. Ronaldo, that is something that it's so big in world culture. It's not even Brazilian culture. Like how many kids in the in many parts of the world was wearing the t-shirt with Ronaldo in the number nine. It's just not something so big and poetic that also has this meaning of uh, getting surpass the ob obstacles and being like the number one and this thing this competition feeling that i think capitalism gives to us and putting all our hopes in one thing so i think uh, this is why it's so hard maybe for, for david because in a way he kind of understand where his father is coming from his father is something that maybe in his lifetime couldn't achieve many of his dreams or maybe didn't have, even have time to have dreams of his own or find his passion or something that he could do so he had kind of had to to have this mentality of i'm just gonna make money and uh feed my family and everyone's to be okay the next generation will be allowed to dream this is where wellington is coming from so i think for davinho in many ways this is this is the logic is hard for him to break because he's also a kid and he's um and it's hard for him to confront someone that is speaking louder than him so i think this is something also very tough to deal with so i think the importance was to kind of in a way acknowledge this dream of wellington understanding this passion of wellington 
and in a larger scope of my country and many people of my country and at the same time kind of trying to go through this storm of expectations that we are very limited sometimes just because of some place we came from so have just questioning the audience and whoever see this film why do we why do we have these dreams or why do we feel that we could only have these dreams why does his father doesn't even pay attention of the other things he's doing even the mother doesn't pay attention for the other things that his kid is doing so i think uh it's a passion that becomes an obsession and this has two sides it might be poetic and beautiful because it's just beautiful a kid that plays soccer very well it's a beautiful image to see it's romantic but i'd say at the same time it's very hard so <laughs> Yeah, the thing that I love most about this is um, in spite of their differences, right? There is love between the mother and the father. We get to see them all as individuals in their little worlds. There is love between the mother and the daughter and even the father and, and the son. There is the reason why this family still invests in each other, in other words, is because of love. And I think that's very important to show because we can disagree with people we love and mm -hmm. still love them. We can say, mm, I don't agree or I don't see the world like this, but I still love you. And most importantly, I'm not going to allow anyone else to not treat you like the way you deserve to be treated. Was that your overall message in showing this family and saying, oh, look, yes, we have these moving parts, but they're very much a puzzle. Yeah, especially in polarizing times, especially when we have this fractured society because of politics, because of beliefs, because of these understandings that now we have a more diverse society trying to claim their own piece of the cake and rightfully so and for many people for different generations it's hard to understand where the other person is coming from people think it's boring and annoying to discuss something that changes the status quo in a way so uh, to do a film about empathy is kind of trying to appeal to the um, emotion in each one of us and trying to find something that even in this very strange times we can try to relate that is the experience of the individual individual so this is hard this is hard for all of us i'm not saying i'm doing best than everyone else it's very hard for me to think about love all the times when there's so much hate going on so uh but at the same time, I have to make this film. I have to do this message because in the end, I believe in that. Even though it's hard to practice every day, but as the characters say in the AA meetings, it's like 24 hours at a time. You can't think about, I'm going to do this for a year. Just let's do this for 24 hours. And that's the beauty of it. I want to thank you because for this film, Gabriel, this gift, you know, presente tão bonito. And I think hopefully you know the world will get to see it um i'm so sad we didn't get to meet on the mountain even though i don't think you would have liked the cold <laughs> <laughs> uh, but i i'm glad you make this made this film so that we can see a different idea a different vision of brazil and hopefully people can stop being surprised that there are black people in brazil <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Katia. i'm so glad you felt that way yeah, absolutely. I was, I said to my husband, I said, finally, I said, and this all, they, they just get to be people. There is no like, it's not like a telenovela or it's like, oh my God, the world is coming to an end. And, and again, it just, it was a lot of joy to see. And I can't wait for to, to share it with more people and say, hey, Hopefully, God willing, we get to sit in a theater together and then, then I can like, you know, on Twitter and whatever and say, hey, we saw it as family and everybody, people were laughing and crying and getting it. You know what I mean? And that's the beauty of film. Yes, I hope so. I really want to see this film in a, a large theater with a 